Lucas didn't remember his birth parents, his father and mother. He didn't even know what they were like or where they had disappeared to. The boy didn't always live in the orphanage. He had been someone's son five whole times, but each time was short-lived. He was always returned. It wasn't all that uncommon. Children were returned sometimes, but five times. And it wasn't Lucas's fault. Even the adoptive parents couldn't quite articulate their grievances. He just didn't fit into their worldview. The first time he was taken from the orphanage, he was very little, not even three years old. He didn't even remember the beginning of his life in the orphanage and considered himself the biological son of a serious and strong father and a cheerful, funny, sweet-smelling mother. The boy loved his parents and was sure of their love. Well, why wouldn't he be? They went to the park on weekends, swinging him on swings, riding ponies, buying ice cream and cotton candy. It was a wonderful time. In the evenings, guests would come over. Mom would dress up Lucas and bring him out to the guests, here's my sunshine. Yes, he's a beauty and a smart one. Really very clever. And we don't force him. You think I read him bedtime stories? No, he picks up the book when reading and asks me to read poems. Lucas didn't remember asking for any poems, and he didn't remember his mom reading either, but he saw that the guests liked the idea of him being smart and loving poetry, so he solemnly agreed. If Lucas was asked which poem he liked the most, and if he remembered any of it by heart, the boy would recite, rehearsed it's not a poem, it's a verse a lovely hand kisses the keys, but I don't remember it by heart, they're complicated. And he's only three years old, the mother exclaimed. He takes after someone, the guests exchanged glances, showered Lucas with candies, and finally sent him off to his room. And then something happened that the boy couldn't understand, even though he was already four by then. One day his father said to him, Lucas, I need to have a serious conversation with you, like adults you understand. I understand. I'm listening, Dad. Lucas already knew he was expected to understand and be serious. Your mom and I will have a baby soon, well, he already exists, but he's still living in mommy's tummy, but he'll be born soon. Great. Will that be my little brother? Lucas was genuinely excited by the news. He always wanted a brother. Yes, something like that the father hesitated. But the thing is, you'll have to live in the orphanage for a while, where we took you from two years ago, remember? The boy didn't remember that and didn't understand what it meant. Is it like daycare, he asked about what he could grasp. Yes, something like that, but in daycare we pick you up in the evening and in the orphanage you'll have to live there day and night, but not for long, maybe just for a year or so. Why? Because I have to work, and Mom might have to go to the hospital. Who will we leave you with? But you'll have fun with the other kids there, I promise. I don't want to. For the first time, the boy felt scared and wanted to cry. I want to stay with you. Don't send me to any other house. All right, all right, don't you dare cry. You'll upset Mom with that, and she shouldn't be upset. I'll take you there tomorrow, and everything will be fine. The boy had hope in his mother. His father was strict and serious, but his mother loved him and wouldn't want to part with him. He rushed to her. Mommy, I won't cry and upset you ever, and I'll learn all the poems and I'll love my brother, just don't send me away. Lucas, stop whimpering. Didn't you agree with Dad? He explained everything to you, his mother replied with unexpected coldness. I can't indulge you right now, you must understand that. Tomorrow Dad will take you to a very good place, you'll be better off there than at home. I don't want to be in a good place. I want to be here with you, Lucas cried. Just then, Dad burst in. What did I tell you? You can't upset Mom. Go to your room and go to bed. He roughly grabbed the boy's hand and pushed him out of Mom's bedroom. Lucas heard him complaining to her angrily behind the closed door. This is what your hair-brained idea led to. I told you not to take in other people's children. I said we'd have our own. Well, who turned out to be right? Well, you, you, Helen answered guiltily.
Just take him there yourself tomorrow, they should understand. I'm pregnant and scenes like this are not for me at all. The next morning, Dad took Lucas to the orphanage. It didn't go without a scene. The boy clung to the man he had considered his father for two years, ran after him down the corridor, but it was utterly futile. The man didn't even look back. In the first days, Lucas couldn't tear himself away from the window, barely ate, hardly slept and cried a lot. He waited for his mom and dad, but they never came. But overall, life in the orphanage wasn't so bad. Gradually, Lucas made friends with other kids who had either long lived there or always been there. They explained that his parents probably would never come. It's always like this they promise but never come. Well, forget it maybe other parents will come and choose you. They often come. Don't cry, his new friend said. I don't want other parents, I want them, Lucas cried, but gradually he found solace. Maybe indeed, others will come, and they'll be better than the previous ones. Others did come quite soon, about six months later. Adopters usually choose their children themselves, whereas orphans are supposed to be happy with any parents. And anyway, the decisive word isn't with the children. Lucas appealed to another couple. Soon to be five, not very little but not grown up either, and practically domesticated, having spent two years in a family. The caregivers praised the boy he's smart, sociable, and likes order. And the new parents didn't quite appeal to Lucas not young, not very well dressed, somehow serious, nothing like the previous ones. But maybe it's for the better. If they're not similar, it means they won't abandon him, especially since Miss Hill, the orphanage director, talked to the adopters, explaining that they need to be attentive and cautious with the boy. Another foster family recently rejected him. And that's a serious tragedy for a child, as you can understand. I hope your relationship will be different. The father remained indifferent throughout the conversation, gazing out the window, while the mother nodded seriously, saying she understood everything. When the new parents took Lucas away, Mrs., Hill, watching the new family leave, shook her head and said to the caregiver and nanny, I'm not even sure if I did the right thing. They seem so emotionally detached, indifferent. Oh, come on, objected the caregiver. They're just reserved, serious people. And their recommendations are excellent, they're well off, established. I have more faith in them than nanny supported. What's good about it when they start hugging and kissing the child right from the first meeting? Those are the ones who usually return them. When they first took him, they said, Our darling, our little love, but as soon as they had their own child, they just threw the foster one away like a puppy. Well, yes, adults already know what they want. They struggled without kids. This is their last chance after all the women finished their conversation and went their separate ways while Lucas went to his new home. Oddly enough, as Dad drove them home with Mom, he bid farewell dryly, wished them luck, and left. Dad has a lot of work. He'll come later, the woman explained, and let the boy into the apartment. There she showed him his room, small, clean, but somehow empty and dull. I hope you're not hungry right now, the mother asked sternly. No, sighed Lucas. He didn't exactly want to eat, but he hoped for something tasty and unusual for the first meeting. Good dinner's at seven, but for now, get used to it, said the mother and left. Lucas sat on the chair and started to get used to it. He felt completely out of place, and he was already longing to leave this house. For dinner, he went to the kitchen, sat at the table, and stared at the plate set before him. There were noodles, which he didn't particularly like, but he reluctantly took a spoon. The noodles seemed tasteless to Lucas. Eating them was repulsive, and even the milk in the cup tasted unpleasant. Are you not feeling well eating, the woman asked. I don't like noodles. I prefer French fries, Lucas replied. Well, no. That's very unhealthy food. I don't eat potatoes at all, let alone fried ones, the woman said. After eating, it was time to wash up and sleep. In the morning, he didn't feel like eating either, and he looked at the plate set before him with disgust. There was the utterly detested oatmeal. He could barely swallow a couple of spoonfuls of the slippery, sticky, and completely bland mess. But he couldn't force himself to eat more, even out of politeness. 
You're not used to it, yet the woman said discontentedly. Lucas couldn't even mentally call her mom. They probably fed you all sorts of junk food in the orphanage. Get used to healthy food. He didn't want to eat. He wanted to cry. He wanted to go back to the orphanage. There, they rarely served fried potatoes. It was mostly mashed potatoes, but it was still much tastier than this healthy food. And I don't even know why they brought me here, the boy thought. No one to play with, no TV to watch. What does this lady intend to do with me? Apparently, the lady didn't intend to do anything. She did turn on the TV, but only for half an hour, and she turned it off right on time, cutting off the cartoon mid-sentence. You can't watch TV for more than half an hour, she said, ignoring Lucas's timid protests. Then there was an hour-long walk, just as dull they simply walked down the street holding hands. By lunchtime, Lucas was truly hungry, but all he got was a cup of unsalted broth with a few crackers and stewed cabbage with a pale piece of boiled chicken. He couldn't hold back the tears anymore. In the evening, he listened as the woman complained to someone on the phone, I don't know what they fed him at that orphanage. You'd think he'd be happy to be in a family, but he cries and doesn't want to eat anything. He wants fried potatoes. Next, he'll be demanding sausage, or some herring, the mother exclaimed. I'd gladly eat sausage and go back to the orphanage, thought Lucas, swallowing his tears. What kind of family is this? I don't even have anyone to talk to. He returned to the orphanage much faster than in two weeks. This time there were no tears on the contrary, he joyfully ran into the playroom, happily catching familiar smells from the kitchen. Miss Hill, after talking to the failed mother, probably realized that Lucas had a hard time in that family, not only because of the food. The woman, who had never had children, was truly lacking in communication skills, not only with children but also with adults. As it turned out, she didn't even live with her husband. True, he came to sign the refusal to adopt a child and seizing the moment, he said, she doesn't need any children. I left her myself, I can't take it anymore. She's absolutely stubborn, incapable of listening to others, let alone children. She's used to living her own life, so let her liver live it. Miss Hill just nodded. She really felt guilty about little Lucas. Yes, the family, judging by the reports, was quite positive, but things turned out differently. However, the second rejection was not a tragedy for Lucas. On the contrary, he was glad to return. And the boy is good, we should find him a suitable family before it's too late. He's already five years old. Before school starts, we need to find a family so that he can go to a regular school, not just online. But Miss Hill decided to take a more responsible approach to choosing the next family. Such a family was found friendly, cheerful, with two other adopted children, a brother and a sister, slightly younger than Lucas. That family didn't immediately adopt the boy. First, they took him as a trial for a visit. He didn't stay there long either. Sorry, but he's not our child. He just sits in the corner and doesn't talk. No matter what you ask, he just says yes or no, and that's all the conversation they said. But the child needs time to adjust. You understand, don't you Miss Hill assured them. I thought you were experienced adoptive parents who could find an approach to him. We could said the prospective relatives of Lucas embarrassed, but it takes time to find it, and in the meantime, both he and we suffer. Not to mention that we have other children who have their own problems. After this failure, Lucas really changed. Even in the orphanage, he began to spend more time sitting in the corner and was bad at making contact. Everyone could see that the boy really needed a family. Yes, can't there be people who can warm this kind heart? He's such a good boy, but luck isn't on his side. Of course he's not the only one returned, but some people can be so irresponsible. The new couple seemed very responsible and quite serious. The husband is a musician, and the wife is a music teacher. They had been trying to have their own child for many years, and after it didn't work out, they decided to adopt. They had one requirement the child must have musical talent. Physical resemblance is not important at all. What matters is spiritual kinship, shared interests. That's why we want an older child to immediately see if they have potential. They saw that potential in Lucas, 
The boy clearly had musical talent. A month later, the adoptive father sat in Miss Hill's office, blushing with shame and carefully breaking his musical hands. Yes, the boy has excellent musical ear, but, but he is completely unable to reproduce a melody. Yes, it happens and it can be treated, but it should have started from infancy, and now I just don't know what to do with such a child, but this is nonsense. In our creative family, ta there will be a boy who can't even grasp a single note. There was also the fifth family. The childless couple couldn't cope with taking care of their dog and decided to take the boy under their care. Lucas was happy to walk with the smart husky, but suddenly it turned out that he was allergic to dog hair. Understand, Lucas is a wonderful boy, but our dog has been with us for five years already. We can't get rid of the dog, but we can't torment the child either. He might develop asthma. Lucas was already in his tenth year. Prospective adopters didn't even show him anymore. How long can you torment a child? He was already studying at the school attached to the orphanage, being a diligent and hardworking student, but he no longer believed in the possibility of his own happiness. Yes, sometimes children his age were adopted, but when that happened, having been taught by bitter experience, Lucas didn't even rejoice for his peers and didn't envy them, but waited for the children to be returned. This happened often, and the cases were much sadder. Lucas was indeed a good kid, but sometimes he fell into a despair that he couldn't overcome. Once Miss Hill asked him what was happening to him, and after a pause, he still answered, I keep thinking, what's wrong with me? Why did everyone reject me? I understand one or two families, but five. Lucas, dear, it's not about you, it's about the adoptive parents themselves. Adults, yet they approach such an important decision so irresponsibly. Well, and perhaps I'm to blame too, I didn't fully delve into the matter. But understand, I'm so happy when one of the children is taken, hoping each time that everything will go well, but sometimes things work out for someone, everything goes well. Not everyone gets returned. And you should consider it as if you're the one rejecting. Did you want to stay with that boring lady obsessed with healthy eating, or with those musicians dreaming of their own prodigy? Not with them. But the first family, where I lived when I was little, I loved them, thought they were the real ones. And they turned out not to be real. What can you do? And if you think about it, they were even worse than all the others. The others, well, they just aren't meant to be parents. But these, I don't understand myself why they did what they did. Well, what can you say? Soon you'll grow up and you'll have your own real family. When will that be? And even then they might reject me. Poor child Miss Hill thought anxiously how this readiness for failure might lead to serious problems in the future. And it will come soon. He thinks there's still plenty of time before he's taken to another family, but I know that ten years is such a stretched moment. But while the moment stretched, Lucas was already in the third grade of the boarding school, like all the orphanage children. During the school year, there was a serious accident with the sewage, and the school had to be urgently closed for repairs, and the children had to be distributed to the nearest district schools. Lucas also became a student in such a school, where regular children studied, whose parents came for them after classes. On the very first day in the new class, one of the students, Liam, offered to be friends with Lucas. It was strange because there were special relationships with orphanage kids, but the boys had a common passion mathematics. Both went far beyond the school curriculum and loved to solve the most difficult problems. Lucas couldn't disagree. He liked Liam too. Okay, let's be friends, but I won't be in your school for long. Once they fix things there, they'll send me back to the orphanage school. Big deal. Not to another city. I know where your orphanage is. Not far from us. We can still meet up. They do let you out, right? Yeah, sometimes they do, but I think nobody would mind us meeting up, especially since we're not going to cause any trouble. We could even hang out at the library together. Maybe you have some textbooks that we don't have. Yeah, that's possible. And would you be able to come to my place? Ask your teachers or whoever is in charge of you. My dad, by the way, is a candidate of physical and mathematical sciences, so I have as many books as a library. That's great. I think they'll let me. 
Why not, right? And we could not only study but also play some video games. I got a new one, but playing alone isn't as fun. It would be great to play together. Returning to the orphanage, Lucas shared his joy with Miss Hill. He had made a new friend who invited him over to his house. Can I go to his place after school? We study math together, and Liam's dad is a scientist, a mathematician. I won't stay long, I'm just really interested in talking to a real scientist. The director allowed it, knowing well that Lucas was drawn not only, and not so much, by the opportunity to communicate with a real mathematician. The boy, spending all his time in institutional surroundings, just wanted to experience a normal home, to, to experience the comfort of a family environment. Of course, this could lead to new disappointments. Yes, a few times they might warmly welcome the orphan, but what if they later refused for some reason? I should talk to Liam's parents, explain the situation to them. With a boy who has been through so much, we need to be especially careful. He doesn't need any more new disappointments, thought Miss Hill. So Lucas soon became a frequent guest at Liam's. True, the boy's father was rarely home, he worked a lot, but his mother was always there. She was a kind and cheerful woman who introduced herself as Mrs. Helen White and won the heart of the little guest, not only with her friendliness but also by putting a whole plate of his favorite food fried potatoes in front of him on the very first day. Seeing how eagerly Lucas was eating, she offered him more. Thank you so much, I love this kind of potatoes the most. We rarely get fried ones at the orphanage, it's mostly boiled or mashed. When I grow up I'll fry them for myself every day. And you, come over more often, I'll specially make these for you, said Mrs. White. And anyway, you can stay overnight with us. Just call the director, let her know so they won't search for you, Lucas called the orphanage, and asked Miss Hill for permission to stay. She decided to talk to Liam's mom first. She confirmed that she had no objections to the boy's friendship and was always happy to see Lucas at her home. That's wonderful, Mrs. White, but could you come over sometime for a chat? You see, I'm responsible for the children and I'm particularly concerned about Lucas. He might stay tonight, but we'll decide what to do next after our conversation. Liam's mother agreed and the next time she volunteered to take Lucas home in the evening, she also went to see Miss Hill for a chat. Hello, Mrs. White, please have a seat. I want to talk to you about Lucas. Do you know his story? No, what happened to him, the woman was concerned. What happened is that despite his young age, Lucas has been through a lot. His mother abandoned him immediately after birth, at the maternity hospital. He's been unsuccessfully adopted five times. Imagine that, five times. Five times a child was given hope and then returned. Like an ill-fitting item. It's not Lucas's fault, it's just that he's encountered people like that some decided to have their own child, others found a dog more valuable, for some, he didn't sing well enough, and so on. Yes, that's terrible, Mrs. White agreed. It's amazing how merciless people can be. Yes, and I would like to ensure that you and your family don't become similarly merciless in his life. I understand that you're not planning to adopt him, but even by accepting him into your home, he might draw the wrong conclusions. Oh, come on, Lucas is such a smart, bright kid. My husband has already talked to him, and he's surprised by his, by his abilities. They are well above average. Yes, I know, but it's not entirely about that. Children from orphanages are a completely different breed. For example, your Liam could go to someone's house and find a very comfortable atmosphere there, loving parents, but he'll still come back home to you because you're the best for him. As for Lucas, he has nowhere and no one to return to. He might very well interpret your kindness as something more, and realizing the mistake would be very painful. But we aren't considering denying him a home or treating him any worse. But soon the renovations at our school will be finished. Lucas will return to our school, and he'll see Liam much less often, Miss Hill said. What if we let the boys figure it out themselves? Our schools and the orphanage aren't so far apart, and the fact that they'll be attending different schools shouldn't hinder their friendship. It might even strengthen it, Mrs. White suggested. That would be lovely, 
but wouldn't someone else's child become a burden for you? After all, if he attends a different school, he'll be visiting you quite often. They won't be able to hang out on the street. And financially, you'll have to treat him to something, even if it's just tea. It might become burdensome for you in the end. Well, what about you? I've invited him myself and I'm always happy to see him. And financially, our family is not constrained at all. A cup of tea surely won't bankrupt us, nor will fried potatoes, Lucas's favorite dish misses. White smiled. And hey, fine. So they agreed. A month and a half later, the orphanage school was ready to accept students, and Lucas had to say goodbye to his teachers and friends from the local school, but not to Liam. They agreed to meet as often as possible so the boys would have to visit each other. Lucas had long since become part of the household for Liam. Visiting the orphanage was a new experience for Liam. At home, he told his parents about his impressions. It's not as scary there as people sometimes describe it. Well, I mean, if you look at it that way, it's not that bad. But if you have to live there all the time, can you imagine, always under everyone's watchful eyes, everything on a schedule, everything by the rules. It's good that I have you. I wouldn't want to live in such a place. I feel sorry for Lucas. Liam already knew that his friend had endured several unsuccessful adoptions, and what amazed the domestic boy the most was how humorously, almost without bitterness, Lucas recounted his misadventures. He barely remembered the first couple of parents, but he felt that they had hurt him the most. No wonder he thought they were his real family and suddenly they refused. I wish I could meet them and give them a piece of my mind, but Lucas doesn't even think about it. Such a good soul. And he remembers the dog without any resentment. I mean, he misses the dog, he said, not the people. It would be nice for us to have a dog too, but it's not possible anymore. And not because our parents don't allow it, but how will Lucas visit us with his allergies or whatever he has? and it would be great if he not only visited but lived with us. We would be like brothers. Mrs. White was very impressed by Miss Hill's story. In the evening, she relayed her conversation with the director of the orphanage to her husband. Can you imagine, dear, what kind of people there are? Five families turned out to be poor for that boy. It's hard to even imagine what he's been through. But after talking to Miss Hill, I got scared myself. Oh, come on, dear, we won't kick Lucas out. Especially since we're not adopting him, he just comes to visit our son. If not him, then someone else will come, and it's not certain that the other would be better. That's not what I mean. This director, she's experienced. She must have seen all kinds of cases. Now I'm afraid that Lucas might hope for something and then find out it's all in vain. Poor boy. Well, he's not that poor, and certainly not naive. I don't think he has any illusions left after all he's been through. Besides, he's remarkably smart and mature for his age, so I hope we won't be the cause of new disappointments. But is it right to tame the boy like that? What do you mean, tame? Is the boy some kind of wild animal? You look out, you might get tamed too, or not. Maybe you really want to adopt him. Yes, I do, Helen simply replied. There's no other way, agree, because if he's just Liam's friend and our guest, I'm afraid it's even more fraught with unpleasantness for both our son and us. Soon there won't be any friendship between the boys, and the relationship with us will change, unfortunately, for Lucas and Alas, and for Liam, too. I agree with that. If we want the boys' friendship to continue in our relationship with Lucas not to sour, we need to decide something. We can feed them lunch, pat them on the head, pat them on the back, of course, but that's not what Lucas needs. In order to remain friends, we must become relatives and we have such an opportunity, at least financially, but will we bear the constant presence of a second child who is not related to us? But you can love not only your relatives. Look at us, darling, we love each other, but we're not blood relatives. I can't say that I love Lucas as much as Liam already, maybe I'll never love him that much, but this boy means something to me. I don't want to feel ashamed in front of him for how I'm acting with him now. It's like flirting, but it's not a game. It's life. 
Lucas himself didn't dream much about staying in his friend's family forever. Yes, he felt good in Liam's house, his parents were welcoming and kind, but hoping that it would always be like that would probably be foolish. He had hoped too often, and it had all been in vain. Even Miss Hill had once summoned him and talked about what he thinks of this friendship and whether he harbors any hopes. Lucas pondered, looking out the window with a frown. Miss Hill, I've decided not to go there anymore. Honestly, I've been thinking about something like this already, so it's better not to come and not to think, and I think they don't really like it either. Well, that I come as if it's my own home, but it's not. So, I'd rather stop coming myself than wait to be kicked out. Well, or not kicked out, but just given a hint. I always feel when I'm not wanted. Yes, and Liam too, I always feel like he's meeting me in a way not to offend, you know. We go to different schools now, he has other friends. Remarkable. A mature boy for his age, sighed Miss Hill. You know, Lucas, if you feel something like this, then you're probably right. No need to wait for hints. But I don't know how to tell Liam about it. I don't want him to get upset. And you don't have to tell him. Just when he invites you, say you can't, you have things to do at the orphanage. That won't be a lie. You were offered to study with those struggling in math. Then there's a chess club you can go to, and the library has a book lover's club twice a week. Eventually, you might have your own things unrelated to Liam. Well, and you can occasionally visit him so as not to get tired and at the same time not to show any discomfort in your relationship with the hosts. So Lucas did. He met his friend either at his own orphanage or on the street, and he started refusing invitations home, citing his own affairs. Liam initially took this normally, but then began to wonder. Are you offended or something? My parents ask why you don't come, they think we've quarreled. Why would we quarrel? I'll come tomorrow if you're inviting. Honestly, I've missed it myself. Lucas indeed missed home and the family that had become almost like his own. It scared the boy he didn't want new anxieties. Liam's parents didn't think the boys had quarreled at all. They understood why Lucas didn't come. We need to do something, Helen her husband said. We need to talk to the orphanage director. We need to adopt the boy. Time is passing, he's already ten, he understands everything. We were planning to take him to the sea this summer, but now we can't take him with us because we're strangers to him. Yes, I'll go tomorrow and talk. Let's see what documents they need. I don't see any obstacles they should accommodate us. The next day Liam's parents were already sitting in Miss Hill's office, discussing their decision to adopt Lucas. You know, I've grown so attached to him. He's been gone for a week, and my heart is heavy. I already feel like we've always had two sons, Helen exclaimed. And now we'll ask Lucas himself what he thinks about it. A child's opinion at this age is considered decisive. They called the boy into the director's office. Miss Hill asked, Lucas, would you be willing to try to become someone's son again? Not to try, but to become. We won't give up on him for anything. We're almost relatives already, right? Lucas Helen exclaimed. Yes, I agree, the boy smiled. I'm used to it too, and I think this time it'll work out. So, the new family will be your birthday present, Miss Hill said. Yes, I'll be turning eleven tomorrow, confirmed Lucas. Great, that's a sign. You'll be able to start a new life from tomorrow. Let's throw a big celebration tomorrow in our shared home. I can even guess what dish you'd like to see as the main one at your celebration, Helen smiled through tears. A big, big portion of fried potatoes chuckled Lucas, and together with his new parents he headed home, where Liam awaited him, no longer just a friend but a brother. If you liked the story, please support me with the thumbs up button. It's just one click for you, but it's very important for me. Thank you.